What's up guys? It's Monkey Bacon here from Soft Monkey Development, and today we're going to be continuing our series of making a game. So, it's been a while. I've, uh, you know, been trying to catch up on my schoolwork and keep my grades up, so sorry about that. I may be a little there may be a few things that I do incorrectly because it's been a while since I've worked on this project. Uh, I got a new computer, got a MacBook Pro. Uh, I dragged over the game on a flash drive and it's now on here. Um, Luckily now we won't have to wait like six minutes before every time I try to build the build up. So let's take a look at our game. You guys don't have to run it, but I'm just gonna run it real quick and see what we need to do next. So I see we don't have bullet to enemy collision, so that's definitely a thing we're gonna need to add. And I'm pretty sure we were going to start generating some enemies. Uh yeah. So let's do that. Let's make it so the game spawns enemies on its own. So to do that. What we're gonna want to do. Let's start out actually before we do anything. Let's take out in main.lua the little test enemy function that we had. Just take that out. We're not gonna need it anymore. Okay. So back in enemy.lua, make some space underneath enemy equals open close bracket. We're going to need two variables to generate enemies. We're gonna need enemy dot timer. Set it to zero for now. And enemy dot timer limb. So What's going to happen is I'm going to run this timer right here, and every time this timer is greater than this limit, it's going to spawn an enemy, or two enemies, or three enemies, on a random side around the screen. So we want to make sure that the timer limb is not just a number. We want to make it, well, I mean, of course it's going to be a number, but we want to make it a different number every single time, so it's not just every three seconds an enemy spawns, an enemy spawns over and over again in the same increment. We want to mix it up, spice up the gameplay. So let's do math.random, let's do three and five. It's not that big of a difference, but it it does make a difference in gameplay for sure. Uh, and that's all we're gonna set for now until we get a little farther. So let's make the function. We'll call it enemy.generate, and we're gonna need delta time because we have a timer. So let's start by running the timer. I don't know if I've ran a timer in the, any of my tutorials actually, but basically you just take the variable and add it to dt and that will run it as a timer. So we have the timer. Now we want to test if enemy.timer is greater than enemy.timer limb then so what's gonna happen in here is we're gonna spawn the enemy. And you guys don't have to write that comments just to help you guys understand what we're doing. Every time we spawn an enemy though to keep updating the to keep the timer limb actually random, we want to keep resetting this variable. That way, every single time the timer is reset, we will have a different limit. So, also at the end of that, speaking of resetting the timer, we want to reset the timer. <laughs> so, set it to zero. So, what will happen is the timer will go up, reach this limit, spawn spawn an enemy, and then get set back to zero. Uh, and then, of course, the timer limit will have another value, a different value between three and five. So the actual spawning of the enemy is a little bit more confusing than just typing enemy.spawn because we want to have two elements that will help spice up the gameplay of our award-winning million dollar game. We want to have uh, more than one enemy be able to spawn at a time and we want to be able to spawn them on different sides of the screen. So to do this we're going to need two variables. We're going to need enemy.amount and let's set it to math.random one and three. That way every single time the timer is greater it'll either spawn one, two, or three enemies. And then set enemy.side to math.random one, four. So the math that side, or enemy.side will uh, decide what side of the screen, I just said the phrase side like six times. Enemy.side will decide what side of the screen en the enemy will spawn on. So one, two, three, and four will all represent sides of this, all four sides of the screen. So, to utilize the enemy dot amount and spawn that amount of enemy enemies. Uh, sorry, <coughs> I've been running notes. Uh, what we want to do is loop. We want to use the loop, the magical loop. So it's one, comma enemy dot amount. So four i equals one comma enemy dot amount. This will do whatever is in here, enemy dot amount of times. If that makes any sense, uh, hopefully it does. If it doesn't, 
I will. I can try to explain it later. Um. Ah, oh God, my nose. So, gross sniffling noises. Now we want to utilize uh, the side variable, which is one of the tougher ones to understand how and why we're using it. But basically, it just allows us to spawn it on different sides, so the enemy's not spawning on the same side every single time. So to do that, what we want to do is test. We want to test if enemy dot side equals one. And we'll just make one, one could be the top, bottom, right, or left. I'm just going to choose left, because that's usually where I start. Um, so I'm going to comment left, so I remember that one represents left. And inside of here, we're going to spawn the enemy on the left side. So enemy.spawn, and we want to do negative uh, 50, because that's the width of the enemy. And then screen height divided by 2. Minus 25. So the, the 25 I got is because it's half of uh, the height of the enemy. And screen height divided by 2 to place it in the middle. Uh, so this spawns it in the left side, middle of the screen. So now we want to do the top side. So if enemy.side equals 2, then top screen width divided by 2, minus 25, negative 50. And then I'm just going to go through these pretty quick, and then I can explain them a little more after I'm done. Screen height, right away. 2, minus 25, and then, uh, oh, oops, that stacks. Okay, one more. If enemy.side equals 4, then... Alright, so hopefully this makes sense what we're doing, but basically just tests if enemy.side is 1, 2, 3, or 4, and assigns that number to a side on the screen, and then spawns an enemy there. Now every time this happens, we want to reset the side so the enemies spawn on different sides. Uh, if this resetting thing right here doesn't make sense, you can take this line out and see what happens. It'll spawn, if we don't reset it, it'll spawn the enemy on the same side every single time. So we want to reset it by just retyping it right there. We also want to reset the amount every time the, ti the uh, timer runs out. So, again, if these two things don't make sense to you, you can just delete them and see what happens. Uh, you'll see that it just kind of doesn't reset things that it should be resetting. And that will totally... It, like, if it doesn't make sense, that will make it make sense. So let's... Uh, Drop this into our enemy update parent function, and we'll build it and see what happens. All right, there we go. We got some enemies spawning from random sides of the map. That time it was three, that time it was two. Awesome, we have generated enemies. As you can see, they're overlapping. We could prevent that. We could do some coding to prevent that. Um, I think what I'm just gonna start with right now though, I think I'm gonna do one more thing in this tutorial. We're going to have enemy collision, or uh, sorry, enemy to bullet collision. So let's just do that real quick because that'll be really easy. So make a new function under enemy.ai and we'll call it enemy.bullet underscore collide. And we're not going to need delta time. So let's access the enemy table for IV and enemies and for IV and I pairs enemy do. Okay. We're going to need to access two tables, really, because we also need to check the position of the bullets. So let's do for I, A, V, A, and I pairs bullet do. Okay. Now we have access to both the enemy and bullet table, and we need, we need to test if the bullet is inside of, is overlapping the enemy in any way. Then we delete both. So... Let's start with some collision code. Um, to test this, we need to make sure that we have the width variables in all of them. We do. We have enemy width set right here. Do we have bullet width set? No, let's set bullet width inside of here too. Um, so that we can utilize it while we're testing for collision. This is inside of bullet.lua, by the way. Okay, so back to enemy.lua. Um, so what I'm gonna test. The, let's just go. Let's just let's just go. <laughs> if va 
dot x is plus va dot width is greater than v dot x. So let's test if the right side of the bullet is overlapping the left side of the enemy and va dot x is less than v dot x plus v dot width. So this is the, this these two lines so far we've tested if the bullet is overlapping the enemy horizontally. So now we just need to do the same thing vertically and we'll be done. So va dot y plus va dot height is greater than v dot y and va dot y is less than v dot y plus v dot height. Jeez. Okay. This code right here is something that I've just kind of uh, imprinted in my brain. It's just a simple little line of code that tests if two things are overlapping. Um, hopefully you can comprehend and how that makes sense and understand it. Um, if not, you should probably you should probably because code like that is really important to be able to comprehend. Um, but basically, this just tests if the bullet is overlapping the enemy. What we want to do is remove both the bullet and the enemy. So to do that, we'll just do table dot remove enemy i because we have i set for enemy, and then we want to do table dot remove bullet i a because we have i a set for bullet. So let's plop this into update enemy and build our game. Let's see what happens if we shoot an enemy. Boom. Both the bullet and the enemy disappear. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope it helped. I know it's, I'm a little tired and a little sick. And I know it's been a while, but I hope this all made sense. If not, feel free to add me on Skype, Monkey Bacon. Easiest for me to contact you on there. You can always email us, though, SockMonkeyDev. Uh, to see what we're working on, you can go at SockMonkey.com. Also, uh, I should have a game to that I may... I have a game that I'm working on that may need some testers soon, so I'll have more information on that later. Uh, again, if whatever you want to see done to this game, like if you... I'm not sure where to go next with this game, so if you have any ideas, uh, leave a comment. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time.